Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Today, we're going to be taking a look at any decks that have funded in the past 7 days, any new decks that have launched on Kickstarter in the past 7 days, and any decks that are going to be funding or finishing their round of funding in the next 7 days. Before you jump into it, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring the bell. There you go. Always ring that bell. We have a, a lot of decks coming up this week, but before we even start talking about those, we want to shout out our two sponsors this week. First up, Lit Playing Cards with their new Cardistry Baseball Series playing card deck that is now live on Kickstarter. If you haven't seen this deck, you should definitely go check it out. It is a early 80s, 90s nostalgia playing card deck for anyone who's ever been into collecting baseball cards, baseball as a sport, or if you just love Charlie Sheen in those uh, Major League <laughs> movies, go check it out. Yeah, Second. dude, it, it, that's awesome. Who loves Charlie Sheen? <laughs> uh, quick, quick side note here. I actually saw an ad the other day on Instagram for Charlie Sheen on Cameo, which is that service where you can pay celebrities to uh, yeah, yeah, to do stuff. And most of the comments were like, "Wow, he looks really bad for his age." <laughs> <laughs> so that made Poor me laugh. Charlie. He didn't look like he was doing great, but uh, yeah. you know, neither here nor there. Second, yeah. we want to we want to shout out our second sponsor of the day, Marvelous Decks. How many of you remember running around in the summer trying to catch fireflies and that magic when you'd capture them in a jar, or you'd be outside in the garden and you'd see a butterfly fly by or land on you even, and that iridescent shimmer that they had in their wings was just so beautiful. Or that first time you ever saw fool's gold and you picked it up and you felt like you really found a real treasure, you know? That's such a such a nostalgic and childhood feeling there, just the the wonder of everything around you. Well, your imagination is about to burst wide open as playing cards come to life with marvelous decks. So prepare yourself for a journey of heightened senses. I'm so excited for that, dude. I cannot wait to see what's in store for marvelous Absolutely. Decks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think... I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I think the name alone says says a lot. So I think there's a high bar it's to mysterious. meet. It's mysterious. It's really mysterious, you know? It really is. So yeah. we are real thankful for both of those sponsors there. Thank you so much. And make sure to check out both Marvelous Decks and Lit Playing Cards Cardistry Baseball Series. And now let us jump into Kickstarter this week. Congratulations to Ornamental Playing Cards for funding. Congratulations to Bao Bao Restaurant and his Instant Noodle Playing Cards, which Our homie. It. Yeah, Bao killed it here. Bow, bow. Bow, bow. Congratulations to Enigma's Puzzle Hunt playing cards. 100 grand, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. Congratulations to Hatchling's Illustrated playing cards. Congratulations to the Photography Deck Camera Cheat Sheet playing cards. I have no idea. I think they uh, cheated Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Aura playing cards by Walty. Congratulations to Statemate. Congratulations to Jodu Vert playing cards. Congratulations to Wind Roses. Congratulations to Minimal playing cards. Congratulations to the Gold the playing card deck. And what do we have ending this? And actually, last but not least, congratulations to Wooden and Acrylic Playing Card Display Stands by TCC, which will fund by the time this video goes live. So, Dude, I have a new name for TCC. Let's hear it. The Crushing Crew, because they crush every campaign. They really do. They, or, they do or some we could say, work. Or we could say the Campaign Crushers. They, <laughs> we'll have to we'll run it by them and see which one they like best. <laughs> awesome. So, ending this week, we have the Raven 4 playing cards, which, as you saw right there, got another pledge. We have the Gath Magic Limited Edition Gath and playing cards, printed by USPCC. We have the Falcon Razor playing cards. Dang, 917 packages. 
the on the brink Cuban Missile Crisis playing cards. I like how JFK is pictures there. <laughs> yeah. The Undressed deck. The Last Fair Deal. The Pulse playing cards by Eclipse. The 8 bit deck Redback. The High Roller Black and White Edition playing cards. The Majestic Goat playing cards. No. The King Arthur playing cards. The Oxalis playing cards. And the Bold playing cards by Elektra. Yep. So, let's see what's up first this week. First up, we have the Mono Hexa playing cards by Luke Wadey Design, which went live Saturday and has already significantly surpassed his goal. So, Luke, congratulations. Right. Yeah. Luke does a phenomenal campaign no question about it i have to say he uh this this campaign is no no difference there he really puts a lot of thought and effort and planning into his campaign um deck we're looking at 18 dollars shipped on the single deck 29 shipped on two decks it's just a steal of a deal and it looks great I think it's really cool too that Luke really runs through a lot of the uh the ability to either A get some of his old decks or can't hear you, Steve. Hello. So I like the fact that Luke always, you know, includes some of his old decks there available for people to pick up if you've missed previous campaigns, obviously, with what he has available. But I think one of the really interesting things that he does on a lot of his campaigns, and I noticed this with Hexa especially, is he has high deck tiers. So if you want to go and yeah. pick up eight bricks or more, like, cool, you can do that. It makes it so much easier for people who maybe are only, who you know, want to pick up three bricks. I mean, this is... It's a great sign for something that's clearly a usable deck. It's something you want to use, and so the more you use it, the more you're going to need because you're going to burn through them. Making it easy for someone who wants to pick up a large amount of bricks is a great idea because no one wants to do the math on, oh, what's a what's a $19 single deck add-on times, you know, 108 like it's not it's not worth doing all the math if you can do it there easily. It all goes towards the bottom of the tiers, which I think is good and it makes it easy. People who don't need that are going to ignore them. People who do want it are going to appreciate the convenience. Yeah, and I mean it doesn't hurt to have extra tiers, right? Absolutely. It doesn't. And I don't I mean, think if you, don't, you, know, if you don't have if you don't have them, you don't have them. People can't, you know, use them if they want it, but it doesn't hurt for them to be there. Exactly. I think, you know, one of the things we've seen in the past is too few tiers definitely can be detrimental. Too many tiers, as long as there's a logical progression to them and they don't add confusion, is okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, Luke always crushes it, always has all the right information, great prices, yeah. and uh, as you can see, just crushed his goal. Right? Yeah. I mean, all the, and all he the has pertinent dope pictures right in his campaign. A hundred percent. So, good luck, Luke. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Flatline playing cards. All right, so the Flatline playing cards is actually designed and it's actually a collaboration between three cardists in the community. It was Caitlin Chen, uh, Caleb, who I can't remember his last name, and Troy, whose last name I also don't remember. So apologies to Caleb and Troy there. But I think it's a uh, it's an interesting deck, especially because it's obviously designed with cardistry in mind. It has those broken borders to really give an interesting fanning element. There's some fun to the deck itself. Um, definitely not bad. The one thing that really stood out, I think, was the price point on this one. $12 for an early bird isn't bad necessarily, but when you factor in shipping, it gets you to a pretty retail-oriented price on that deck for an early bird. So if you end up looking at the price point on the regular standard there, puts you pretty much over what I would consider would be a reasonable spot for this, just because it is a relatively standard deck. Um, that being said, you know, a couple dollars less, under that $20 mark, like $18 for this probably shipped would have been a, would have been a price point where I'm more comfortable with it at least. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think, I think 
the campaign has everything, um, you know, other than that price point that I'd like to see uh, it on. But I, I think the, the half brick box is really cool. Um, obviously, Hanson Chan Gamble's Warehouse, respectable. Yeah. Um, re you know, reputable as well, both printer and fulfillment. Um, you know, I, I think uh, the one thing that just doesn't hit at home for me is the court cards kind of don't go with the rest of the deck. But, um, you know, uh, are they, nur oh, maybe they, are they nurses or eh. I, I guess, I guess it kind of just confused. It throws me off a little because the deck looks like it's, you know, all about medical, like flatline hospital for the brick box. And then I'm kind of lost. They look like jesters or something. And yeah, I'll agree. I, mean? I don't see the tie in there. I do like the, whim the whimsical style of them, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure how they yeah. tie in with the theme. I do have yeah. to say too, I like the, uh, the custom drawn and that hand drawn feel to the indices, and I like the look of the pips. They're not standard, which is cool. Pips, yeah, yeah. I which did, I think, I yeah, the they did really well with that. Um, again, that price point I think is the only hiccup there, but otherwise it's a solid deck and a solid campaign. Yeah, by the amazing Caitlin. Yeah, and Caleb and Troy. Yeah, I don't know the other two, so I'm sure they're amazing if they're working with Caitlin. But yeah, no uh, doubt about yeah, that. Good luck. And, I, and one last thing that on this one too is I think a portion of the uh, proceeds actually go to supporting frontline workers, which I think is a really worthy cause for a deck. Yeah. So kudos yeah. on that. Next up, we have the no playing cards printed by USPCC. No. So this is actually a relaunch on the campaign. Um, I want to say a couple months ago, this went live and didn't succeed at the time. So I'm guessing it Hopefully went back to the drawing board and they're bringing it back. Uh, so yeah, look, the early bird, $14, pretty spot on. The, that's shipped. Yeah, shipped $14. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's great. Early bird for two is shipped 22 so you're looking at $11 each. The odd thing is I only see early bird tiers. That's cool. Yeah, except what happens when you run out? I guess they they're only doing a limited run to some they're extent. They're only doing a thousand decks, so yeah. Right? So that was the but one thing. Here's the one thing that we yeah. found a problem is it says limited print a thousand decks, and then it says crushed. Yeah. So what I think is the campaign, like you said, came up previously when USPCC was doing crushed stock on thousand deck runs, and now they're not. So um, this is probably just the same copy, uh, which basically is a little hiccup. You know, but um, I would definitely figure that out. But it's one or the other. It's either 2,500 decks or it's 1,000 and it's not crushed. Yeah. Yeah, and if that's the case, 2,500 and crushed sounds great. Again, broken borders on this. More of a cardistry and flourish-oriented deck, I would say, in my book. Uh, those prices can't be beat, though. I'm also curious, though, like I said, once the early birds run out because they're also time limited like you're basically not allowing anyone to buy these after your first 24 hour early bird so or however long your early bird is so i think this oh, campaign dude, really yeah. they're all early birds and they're all 24 hours set yeah oh, so dude. i think this was not properly set up i'm guessing that this will probably either have new tiers added or will get canceled and relaunched again because that is probably not the intended action there so, yeah, let's hope they, they fix that before this video airs. <laughs> yeah, so Anders Ericsson, hopefully you see this because by the time this video airs, your your early birds will be not there. Maybe We'll have to see if we can reach out on Instagram. But what otherwise, it, Anders, Anders yeah, Anderson? yeah, no playing cards. I think he's on there via Instagram, but we'll have to hit him up. Uh, all right, next up we have the Card College Playing Cards Limited Edition. So... This TCC, deck, yeah, again, TCC again crushed it. Crew. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all their box sets for this sold out yeah, in 78 minutes. Highly specific, but, like, awesome. Um, so basically all they have left on this one right now is the one pair of regular editions, which is the red and the blue of them. They're also working on this acrylic case here to come out with, which I think is just absolutely gorgeous looking like a smoked... Like a block of ice. Yeah, it's like a smoked acrylic with, like, a, a coin in the center. It's so cool. They do such amazing work and really, really do. like we said, you know, they put a lot of thought into their process and that's why almost every one of their campaign just crushes. Um, yeah, for sure. 
they'll likely be printing with uh, Taiwan Playing Card Company. I think that's who they go with pretty frequently. Oh, no. USPCC for this one. So USPCC on this deck distributed by themselves, though, and TCC actually has like the distribution network set up to to accommodate that. So I think it's good that, you know, they a, put it in there, but also like they're a well-known fulfiller. So yeah. awesome. Good luck on them for this one. I'm curious to see what they're going to be launching after that luxury acrylic set, because I'm sure that's going to sell out fast too, and they're still going to have more than 20 days to go with only yeah. the standard pair so i'm sure they'll keep coming up with some yeah yeah no i think it's gonna be fun to see what what kind of innovation they come up with this one so good luck guys next up we have the tartan playing cards by patchwork so to me this is a uh an interesting deck because i usually find that when there's patterns like this they look a little better as a as a borderless deck versus a bordered deck. Um, I think that holds true for this one as well. I think it's good that they have USPCC and Gamblers listed immediately. And one big thing too that we're seeing a lot more of, people using the images. Remember that not everyone's reading every single detail of the campaigns. We're, we're guilty of that too. We scroll through these things fast and don't always read it. These images help solidify that it's being printed by a reputable company. It's being fulfilled by a reputable company. You've thought about those processes, things like that. So definitely use the the images when they're provided. Um, What's that early bird coming up? The early bird on this one's coming in at seventeen dollars shipped. Again, we're seeing some good pricing on. I uh, see twenty one twenty for the standard. Again, I think this is another one of those situations where that standard price should be that $17. This thing could probably be right. shipped for 15 as an early bird, and it yeah. would be a worthwhile deck considering it looks like the majority of the courts... Okay, so so this is the other issue I have with this one. This it's is your only... Yeah, yeah it's the only, your only picture of cards here. I can't tell if they're standard courts, if they're semi-standard. You say custom aces and courts, but like... Okay, I can see where the aces are customized. These courts look semi-standard to me. That's so standard courts. Yeah, they yeah. have like little little things that kind of add to it, but for the most part, they're standard. Yeah, so like definitely have bigger pictures in there so people can see what's going on. I do yeah. like that some of the cards here and there have a little bit of customization to them. I think it looks cool. Um, but yeah, I think some of those details, like more pictures would go a long way to help sell this deck because i know the yeah. social media aspect has been there it's just being able to know what the cards look like and I, this is also an interesting one and this is probably just because it's uh, a <laughs> like i i feel like they maybe got their prototypes from uspcc as well or like <laughs> that's hilarious yeah like uh, are these maybe renders? I can't tell what kind of what kind of render do you get. You know what it is? They're printing with USPCC and they want everyone to be prepared for what it's going to look like with borders. Like that maybe, probably the best render I've ever seen. Maybe that's <laughs> brilliant thing. <laughs> but either way, I think this is an interesting concept to it, and I think for people who enjoy this style deck, it's definitely a decent deal on the early bird. I'd say the price point could be a little lower, but definitely consider also more pictures of the actual custom aces and semi-custom courts. So good luck. Next up, we have the Modern Life's Tribute deck. So as you can see, I think any kid of the 90s here can see right away there's a very close linking here to obviously Rocco's Modern Life and to that Nickelodeon-esque vibe. Um, that's the intention yeah, of these decks. The price? What's the price on this bad boy? Uh, fifteen dollars shipped. Early bird, seventeen standard. This is what we should be seeing for most standard yeah. decks. I mean, this is price point spot on. It's an interesting deck. It's uh definitely nostalgia oriented, and I think a lot of people are going for that nostalgia deck lately. We see it with the eight bit decks. We see it with uh the cardistry baseball series decks. Like a lot of nostalgia nostalgia builds up because it helps establish on a story you've already built. It's a great idea. Um, great for kids. This is a great deck, uh, you know, if you have kids. And yeah, it's it's definitely fun. Except the jacks here on the end look like they're drunk, so I don't know if that's like great for kids or what. But it's definitely a yeah, fun. Definitely, you can just tell them it's coffee and tea or something. Exactly. I mean, it's definitely a fun little deck. Um, I like the gaff like inclusion. The yeah. yeah it's, it's definitely a cool concept. I'd be curious to see what their next. 
they have all the information you have the printing and fulfillment everything's there it's spot on you know if this deck is your style go for it for sure. yeah yeah good luck to them all right next up so next up we have the card game book and playing cards designed for travelers which has already funded i have to say uh this uh, card games 101 reached out to us ahead of time to kind of give a quick look at the copy on the campaign make sure all the information was there and really take a look at what they were offering i think i gave them some pointers on maybe some like sentence structure and stuff like that but i think from what i saw initially the deck concept itself looked cool i also thought it was really neat that they had a uh, an altruistic purpose behind the deck as well they're helping to support you know children and learning math I thought that was cool. Yeah. So for every box set, they'll pay to teach a child five hours of math. That's something really cool. Um, the concept behind this as well, I think, was the fact that these cards are meant for you to take on a road trip, take camping, places like that, and use the accompanying book to learn games. You forget the rules for rummy or something like that. You have this book to teach, to walk you through it. But also, yeah. they had this cool idea of some of the ad cards would be more common cards, so or common games. So like trying to find some of these which i love this back design i have to say like i think it's just such a it reminds me of like a cooking show or something like something like absolutely <laughs> like it's like a bakery show or something it's got a great vibe to it and i have to say those are like some of the thinnest borders i've seen on a deck and i think it's smart because this would not look great as a full like borderless back but that thin border gives just enough break point there that it's worthwhile it looks good but i yeah. think uh I think the render if you look at that render right above it they have bigger borders actually uh yeah it could be so we'll have to see i guess on completion i'm hoping that they did thin borders though because i like how thin that is yeah. oh it looks good yeah um yeah you can see uh, i must oh yeah here you go so here's the custom playing cards i was talking about so they have games on two of the ad cards which i think is really cool to see like a quick little cheat sheet of like how to play um yeah. where are we at with price point on this one though i think uh early bird deck of cards 18 dollars shipped on the early bird um 20 on the yellow limited kickstarter edition and then 21 yet yeah, see it's still rolling over that price which, point which doesn't make any sense that the fact that the normal one is more than the limited edition yeah that is a very good point kind of kind of crazy to me but I, either way, I mean, it's it's pricey for what it is. I mean, I, I, it's cool that it comes with, or you can play 30 games with it, but that's any deck, you know. Um, but it does have a booklet, which you can get. Yeah, and it's an ebook, so. I think it's 11 bucks, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. It was, where are we at? By the ebook save. Yeah, $11. So no shipping there because obviously it's an ebook. But yeah, I think that price point is just a little too high. But at the yeah. same time, you're getting i mean you give they're, they're giving some to charity so yeah you know, it is what it is it's cool that they're doing that so they're probably trying to offset a little bit of that money they're giving up yeah and i think that's you know that's a good way to kind of slightly go over that price point but still i think you know i'd be i'm curious about the the standard deck versus the limited edition price point as well and then the early bird i think they probably could have come in at all three editions right around that 18 dollars shift point and it would have made a lot yeah. of sense but yeah, yeah. but not 33% off. Wait, yeah, that says 33% off. Yes. Deck, uh, deck yes. Of cards. Yeah, dude, how is that even possible? 33% off that is what? How much is it? $12. So 33% off is what? $16 retail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, I like the concept. Uh, I think there's potential with it but yeah that price point and yeah i'm curious about the difference there i like the yellow back so i think the colors on this is cool like the concept of it's cool so yeah, good the luck limited to edition, the limited edition is a a one way too yeah yeah which is interesting so good luck though next everyone's using that tail huh it's a big big uh famous color right now yeah dude even this next deck is gonna come in with like a an interesting teal-ish color on it. Yeah, Jack. and I, I mean, I said this is obviously um, a deck that in my head says it's thirty-two dollars. You know, yeah, you don't know 
you don't know who the printer is. It's got uh, definitely like an artist. And it's, it's an artist deck. Yeah. Uh, artist decks seem to gravitate towards that higher price point initially, just because they don't necessarily feel out the market always as much. And I think feeling out the market for proper price point is key. Um, yeah. yeah. To me, I think the one thing that stands out with this as well is the fact that this statement here, if the campaign does exceptionally well, we will consider switching printers to one of the more established printers, such as NPCC, WJP. Okay, like, cool. I think coming in with this set as, you have it, you have it here, 6,000 pound printer upgrade. But, like, say who the printer is. Having that open uncertainty there just leads uncertain leads your backer to feel uncertain about the campaign. You want all of these minor details to be hammered out ahead of time. Or, say... 6,000 question mark, question mark, question mark. And then when it gets to it, surprise them with it. You know, it's something to, you want to make sure the details are hammered out if you're going to show some of the details there. So, yeah, for sure. How much is it? Um, early birds, 16, 31 shipped. Told you. <laughs> $35 for the normal one. So, price point on this one is a big issue. Um, twice as much as it should be yes easily so especially for a standard tuck and standard cards um yeah, if you print yeah for cards. so and i think and i'm sure you know shipping being one of them so let's see stretch goals prototypes so shipping yeah so it looks like this being self-fulfilled and i think part of the problem here is there probably was an intention to self-fulfill from the start, and so there was no effort to look into potentially other fulfillment services, realizing that you could bring shipping down so significantly. If yeah. most of your backers for this deck are in a specific geographic region, you can find a fulfillment service within that region that would probably cut your shipping in half easily and make this yeah. a $22 deck, which is still a bit too high for this, but it would bring your price point down. I think that's something to definitely consider. So. Yeah. Whether you've handled shipping in the past or not doesn't necessarily dictate that you should do it again. You should really consider prices as, as a motivating factor there because you're going to be paying someone else to ship, but you're going to be saving a lot of money and get more backers. So yep. good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Next up, we have American Era's playing cards. So this is a redo, right? Yeah, this is actually a relaunch. Um and I feel like the original campaign was relatively close to funding, but I can't recall now. But this would be interesting to see. Um, I believe this is being printed by USPCC. No, it's Cardamundi. Is it? That's right. It's Cardamundi. Yep, it's Cardamundi and Gambler's Fulfillment. That I don't remember. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, I don't think it said Fulfillment, did it? Actually, yeah, I do not see fulfillment. I don't it saying where it was fulfilled from. Interesting. That was one thing that was missing from the campaign. Yeah, I definitely think you need to obviously consider that. Let's see. Fulfill. Yep. Yeah, nothing about shipping or fulfillment in there. So yeah. it's funny because there's so much detail and information built into this. Like that's not a small detail to miss. You want to talk about your fulfillment, even if you are self-fulfilling, if you're self-fulfilling, put it in there. It adds a level of certainty that a backer is looking for when they're already taking a risk on your campaign. Yeah, um, sure. that being that's cool. It's cool. Art though, you know, I, I think yeah. the art is cool. It's creative, you know, um, and it's coming in at that $20 price point again, but I think the one thing that distinguishes this from some of the other $20 decks we've seen today is the inclusion of gold foil on the tuck. Like, that's a an additional cost in the deck creation, which I think justifies the price point going a little higher. Probably not much higher than that. Maybe $20, $21 is the perfect price point for a standard deck with tuck modifications. But at the same time, I think a lot of people need to start thinking about the fact that, like, you have a standard deck and standard tuck. It's not $20 if you can go through Card of Monday and have this done for $20, you know? Uh, Ara, go down for a second, real quick. I want to see the court cards real quick. Go down. So the red. Okay, red. Go down. Here we go, right here. So, okay, cool. All right, I just wasn't sure how they were laid out, but I can see it now. Yeah. Cool. Right on. Cool. Well, good luck. And let's see what's next. We have the T series green tea playing cards for magicians. Yeah. This is definitely an interesting deck. Bam, right out the gate. Printed by yeah. USPCC, fulfilled by gamblers. Perfect. 
classy I'm curious what they mean by classy marking system because I don't really know if I'd call a marking system classy, you know? <laughs> Seems like an odd modifier for it, but cool yeah. to know there's a marking system out the gate. USPCC, Gambler's Warehouse, 2500 yep. tech run. What does that say right under that? Go up. Uh, right there. Okay. Uh -huh. Stock premium grade paper, crushed stock after we reach 9000 guys. Cool. So you're hitting a stretch goal right out the gate with it. Discounted pricing, free U.S. shipping. Right, so, dang, free U.S. shipping, $14 right there. So I think one of the things to take into account here, too, is a lot of times people think, okay, well, we're going to add our effort to design the deck into the cost. And really, this is an odd industry where you don't, you shouldn't be doing that because it inflates your cost of the deck significantly on the right. sales side. This is a perfect example, though, where someone not only designed a deck, but then in addition, designed a marking system for that deck, and they're charging fourteen dollars a deck. Like that that's is great. that's the perfect price point. This is this is a great price point for a worker's deck, and I think that's what this is intended to be is a worker's deck. It's relatively standard quartz. I like the little inclusion of the green in there. It's a very like green tea green. Um, yeah, I mean, the, like like I was saying to you, I think it's a it's a really cool deck it's got great pricing and the campaign is laid out perfectly the only thing i would love to have seen is instead of that red back which kind of doesn't really go with that green yeah. it's a nice like brown kind of dirt color to represent dirt coming from i mean the tea leaves yeah. coming from the dirt kind of something that, was, that like what they like, used color. here yeah like, i would just be i'd be all about it if it was uh like a brown color rather than that red i just don't think that red and green go together but other than that, I think I think they crushed it. It's super cool back design. It's it's clever. Um, yeah, the price is on point. Good the for one, you guys. The one thing I will say is a little bit better, uh, a little bit better layout for the stretch goals. While you mention a stretch goal up here, you know, crush stock after we reach nine thousand, it's always good to have a dedicated section to stretch goals. Also, it may be worthwhile to consider stretch goals beyond just crush stock. Um, I think the one interesting thing about that really is that I know a lot of magicians who just use bicycle cards, not crush stock, stock. So I don't know if crush stock as a stretch goal for a magician's deck is that much of a draw. So having maybe other steps up there between the goal of 6,300 and 9,000 to kind of get the momentum up to that point may be beneficial. Um, I think every campaign should have stretch goals no matter what. It always helps drive beyond your initial goal. Even yeah, if you know what I would do, basically, doesn't it come with a does it come with a seal? It looks like it comes with a seal, right? Um, right uh, there. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, no. Okay. okay, I was like, even if it does, I mean, if it came with a seal, you just add that as a stretch goal, even though you're going to do it anyway. Yeah, things like that. I mean, there's definitely ways you can do like simple stretch goals in there where it's like you know, honestly, like a stretch goal is like oh free pdf for everybody explaining the marking system at seven thousand things like that like simple stuff that doesn't necessarily add cost but adds drive behind the momentum of the campaign so yeah. either way killer price good point yeah. good luck with it next Word. up we have the bicycle cyber shock playing cards printed by uspcc so and i think this is one thing we actually talked a little bit about earlier yeah do me, a favor. do me a favor click on excelsior right there for a sec oh this is their first created forget it yes i know we've talked you've seen this before the reason being this was advertised significantly on instagram for like the past two years and this is oh. it finally launching yeah so was it you was it always called cyber shock or was it bioshock before no it was cyber shock bioshock is a different deck yeah um i'll i'll tell you this isn't my style deck from an artistic point of view but i think the campaign itself hits some great points out the gate you're coming out of the title knowing it's printed by uspcc i don't necessarily like that part of it but i think in this subtitle here we've seen some people utilize that well to talk about you know printed by uspcc fulfilled by gamblers warehouse out the gate um they've already crushed their goal which i think is awesome so, and, you know, when you have a, a significant lead time to printing your deck, you have the time to build that uh, that momentum even before you launch. So, this has done well. 
Excuse me. <laughs> Putting you to sleep there, buddy. Uh, um, yeah, I think I think what you know what's cool. I think the the gilding looks pretty cool on it. Um, on the gilded versions. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's shop. It goes with the deck. Those it are really does. Really crush the gilding colors. Yeah. Those are gonna, those are gonna look really nice. I'm, um, I'm not a huge fan of the face cards just because they're a little crazy and those will chip relatively easy, but. Yeah, it's a little uh, hard to read, all things considered. Like, the pink kind of fades into it a little bit. It's, I guess it's not even that it's hard to read. It's busy. But, it does look 3D, though, eh? Yeah. This, it, again, this really isn't my art style, but I think right. it is yeah, a cool either. deck. Like, they've got some nice touches to it. Yeah, see, I like this much lighter version here. Um, yeah, th this is the only thing that... Right here, this kind of looks like... It doesn't kind of bring... The cyber shock feeling to me. It's a dope, like little box, but it's wooden, and this whole deck is all about metal. And do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it probably would have been better having been like maybe 3D printed in like a silver color, something like that. Yeah, yeah like kind of. I mean, I love the design you know, of it, but yeah, it's beautiful. It's, I mean, it's an amazing box, but it just doesn't go with the deck. All right. So, what are we looking at here? Standard deck, seventeen dollars. Good. Dude, that's yeah, that's dead on. Uh seventeen. So you're looking at around that's forty five bucks for the, the for gilded the yeah, for the gilded and a standard. Thirty bucks that's so it's like about thirty twenty eight bucks. I mean, yeah, twenty eight. Yeah, it's twenty eight bucks for the gilded. And a dollar of that shipping, so really it's twenty seven. Uh not bad. I mean, that's yeah, what so you're... Price, yeah, it's, prices are solid, I think. Yeah. And there's your example how the stretch goals are laid out. You know, I think they did a really good job. Yeah. Uh, the one thing... They have so much information on it. There really is a lot. I don't see... So the one thing about it, I have to say, is... We're making efforts to keep the fulfillment process green with sustainable materials without compromising on the need for our decks to arrive at the end. So I'm guessing that they're self-fulfilling. That being said, it's worthwhile to to point that out. Again, I think you know we said that earlier tonight already, but for all this information that you have, that is the one thing that I see missing. Otherwise, phenomenally put together campaign. It is so much information, and that's almost nice to that's see. <laughs> I, you know what I hate to say that because then you get people who only put in five things and they're like well you said don't have too much but like I, mean, I think I'd rather have more than not enough but yeah. I'm just it's just a, it's a it's a lot of information to take in yeah you know but it's good it's it's better that than not yeah you know so good luck uh crushed it Excelsior next up we have the Royals luxury playing cards again uh, also crushed it yeah thousand back is awesome lee mckenzie crushing it um you know he's a, a veteran obviously 18 dollars shipped 25 shipped for the limited edition um which i don't know if there was actually a difference other than color between the two uh, the back design's totally different but like there's not actually any added like foil or anything like that that the one has I want to say if you if we go down we can see the difference the the one the limited edition looks like it might be foil or metallic but we were talking about it and it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. So but, first off I get a very theory 11 vibe from the tuck which not as a bad thing just as an observation I think it's cool. Uh, I love the design of the artwork. I like the back yeah. design in general. It's dope. Yeah. So here's where we start to see that like foil but everywhere you you look, it mentions it as metallic ink, which I think even in the best of lighting situations, anyone who's seen metallic ink knows that it doesn't look like foil. It looks like shiny ink. Um, and we'll, and that's even kind of generous. It looks like slightly shiny ink. Um, whereas this really appears to be foil. So I'm curious. I'm thinking it's... it's metallic ink I'm, I'm not thinking it's foil yeah 
Yeah, eye-catching metallic gold ink detail. Yeah. So yeah, everywhere it talks about metallic ink. So I would make the assumption that even on the tux, it talks about metallic ink. Um, so the final, yeah, yeah the, the final version may look a little different. Foil and matte. See now, this foil. is yeah. So I think the tuck is foil. Okay. And matte, but the the deck itself is metallic gold deck. All right. Yeah. So so the one thing that I will say about this is, this isn't necessarily easily interpreted because it's cards, 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 tuck. It, there might have been a better way to kind of like line that up that being said you know that's me nitpicking more than anything um yeah, i mean i think it would say it right here right yeah Matt finished tuck box card stock in midnight blue i love this one beautiful right here. white gold foil stamp tuck box yeah right. there you go printed at q1 oh, highest quality by uspcc no such thing guys just so you guys know no such thing as q1 highest quality anymore it's all the same it. it's all the same funky registration yeah it's all the same crappy printing but yeah now this is a good looking deck. Um, yeah, it's metallic. Right there, right there. Metallic gold ink. Yeah. Yeah. The so. Deal. So it's again, I, the final the final product's gonna look a little bit different than that being said because it's not gonna have the shimmer that a foil would. But either way, beautiful decks, and I love the fact that the luxury is uh, borderless design. So. Um, cool. Does it talk about fulfillment? Gambler's Warehouse. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So very nicely done on this campaign. I think the yeah, price they point... Yeah, they did everything yeah. right, right? You know, I mean, I mean, listen, a standard deck at $18 with metallic ink, it's worth it. It's a nice... Yeah. And foil and foil embossing on the top. Like, it's got all three checkboxes for a higher price point. So I think, yeah, they did a good job there. Yeah. And, and the cool thing about this is the first 24 hours, you got a free deck. If you're basically uh, back any tier... You got a free classic deck, and if you backed specific tiers, you get to choose between a classic or a luxury deck for free. Which that time pin period has ended already, though. So, right. sucks. But, if, but that's just a dope part of their campaign that just allows you to get a free deck. Yeah. So next up, we have the Galactic Paradise playing cards. Tanner and Christian. Yeah. So this is uh. Perfect. Again, right out the gate, USPCC, Gambler's Warehouse. Um, <laughs> Tanner, Tanner messaged me and he said he's ready for us. There you go. So uh, <laughs> actually, this is a prime example of why I'm not a fan. I'm going to refresh this page real quick just so it comes back to where it was when we first started here. Uh, that did not work as I had hoped. Oh, well. So the one thing I noticed here, and we discussed this earlier, and I know really Chris, this is a big push by Christian always to not include shipping in the deck. I think it's not the industry standard, which makes it an outlier in a way that may be seen, I don't want to say like deceptive, but might confuse people because ultimately like people expect shipping to be included. So, so while the deck is $10 and I think the shipping after the fact, which will be handled post campaign in the US is $545. It's a great price point. Sixteen dollars shipped for a deck. To yeah. me, I personally wouldn't want to split the cost because then I'm having to remember to budget for something twice. The nice thing and almost the painful thing about Kickstarter is sometimes you buy all your stuff and you get a big bill one month, but once you've paid it, it's it's done. In this case, that's not true. And I think to me that's a little bit of a deterrent, all things considered. I'd rather just see sixteen dollars on here when it gets charged at the end of the campaign. Instead of having to potentially wait three, four months after when they're ready to finally ship and then get another charge to come through. Yeah, I mean, I, I backed a deck once and I got a bill at the end and I was like, what am I getting a shipping bill for? Like I paid for the deck already. It yeah. The only one I've ever done where I've been charged at the end. And, you know, we, we go through all these these campaigns uh, pretty thoroughly and a, a lot of people don't so leaving that out is is definitely a, a shock for people and at the end of the campaign they get a bill for however many decks they've purchased you know but their prices are on point their, yeah. their deck is super cheap which is awesome and uh good stretch goals 
That's the information. See, and here's the thing that stands out to me, though, too, is if you look at this Pledge $10 tier, which is the one deck tier, yes, while under that little read more, it says shipping charged at the end after the campaign, it isn't by, like, it isn't natively expanded, so you very well could miss it by just clicking on this. Yeah. And to me, I think that's part of the problem there. I don't necessarily think it makes it easier for the backers in any way. And at the end of the day, everything you want to do about your campaign is to make it easier for the backers. So something to consider. Uh, I'd love to hear some feedback from other campaign backers in general. Leave it in the comments below if you feel that this is a positive or a negative or you don't really care either way. So, yeah, and it's great. They put printed by USPCC and fulfilled right in the yeah. Under. The, the title which is great i, I think this is a, gr a brilliant use of the subtitle there because a lot of times like nothing really in there is interesting that's useful that's really useful out the gate you can actually know that before you even go into the campaign which is amazing so good job on that one guys and good luck on the rest of the campaign good job next up we have cardistry baseball series playing cards our sponsor yeah so you may have already gotten a little bit of insight into what this deck entails um, the one cool thing I have to say here that I think Mike did with his campaign is this full image only kind of approach just looks so clean. Yeah, it does. Like, it's, it's, it's a lot of text there, but it's clean still. It's easy to read the green on the white. Um, printed by USPCC, fulfilled by gamblers right in the first portion of it here. I think it's yep. super cool that they're making a deck of cards that goes inside this foil with a stick of gum. That Dirt being stick of gum. Yes. Yes. And that being said, eighteen dollars out the door. Shipped for the hobby pack, which is for silver foil, the tuck, the pink gum, like the whole Yeah, the whole nine yards. So ultimately if you're out there right now making a single deck of cards with a standard tuck and standard cards inside and charging more than eighteen dollars, where's my stick of gum? Where's my foil <laughs> wrapper? Like I, I think that's the it, foil somewhere, either on the wrapper or on the tuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it it has to, and I think at this point it shows you how much extra you can put into a deck of cards, and still keep it sub twenty dollars. Like, there's no reason that a standard deck of cards should be twenty dollars at this point, unless you're adding foil, metallic ink, embossing, things like that. Uh, this is a beautiful deck, and it's a beautiful campaign. Uh, no surprise there. Doc, Doc's playing cards, late cardistry playing cards phenomenal campaigns the all the fact, time the fact that they named the joker joku instead of joe boo is amazing yes no they really did such a great job with this also as we mentioned earlier the deck is really built off of the idea of major league the movie from the 90s with charlie sheen and uh wesley snipes it, and like they were basically a a ragtag base of you know yeah set of baseball team and it was it's a phenomenal movie if you haven't seen it i highly recommend checking it out they're hilarious but that was the main motivation behind this deck so it's got some interesting little kind of uh fun bits to it absolutely great campaign though so good luck to lit cardistry playing cards for this one and last up we have let's get into this one the south beach playing cards so again good use of the subtitle to say printed by uspcc uh fulfillment by gamblers in the first paragraph consider putting it in the idea of the sub subtitle there as well but again straight out the gate printed by uspcc fulfillment by gamblers and that pot is spot on a 15 dollar deck spot on but let's, let's go down a little bit my turn. <laughs> uh, so here's my problem with the deck. Um, not my only problem, but, uh, you know, right there it says, I wanted the Jokers to be completely different, but have similar visual shape. So I went with the two versions of Whale Tails. Now, the bikini thing is kind of ha-ha-ha, funny. It does look like the Whale Tail, but you can't put a picture of a big butt on there and, and say whale tails like it's just it's just not right but that's my best way of being <sighs> as correct as i can for you tyler but um you know i i just think hit i have a big problem with dudes um creating decks and just doing stuff like this and you know even like you mentioned before if you look at the pips 
Yeah. Know, it's kind of a, it's oh, yeah. just, it, it's when a guy gets a hold of something like this, it just becomes, um, you know, it, it had a lot of potential. It could have been a really cool summer vibe deck with the octopus down there, like, dick, yeah, like dick, dick all over the, the deck. It would have been really cool with a bunch of funky summer things like that but and i yeah, just realized the uh the spades are shark tooths as yeah. well yeah there was a lot of potential on this i think that does kind of diminish the deck a bit um yeah i mean just the fact that like, guys just do that that's what guys do and unfortunately they take some potentially cool ideas and they just you know do what they do to it and yeah i mean you can even see it with like the jack of clubs here the jill of clubs like taking off the bathing suit but at the same time it's like you don't see a dude in the king stripping off his suit like it's just yeah, a lot of inequality just... yeah it's, it's a lot of uh lack of equality between it and this is something we've discussed in the past too because we saw it with the uh the undress deck where you know there was clearly nudity involved in the deck but it's not in a way that's demeaning yeah. it was equal right like, yeah it was very fat with hair on his yeah. Head. yeah i mean it's all about the approach yeah. to it and like being true to life i mean i think the one thing too about this is like it it doesn't touch on the fact that there's different types of people at the beach like yeah this is inspired by south beach miami like i'm sure not every dude you see at south beach is straight up ripped like overweight guys probably enjoy surfing just as much as the next guy like and, and they have speedos on yeah i've been i've been there so you know they have some dudes that have speedos on it, you know, it, it just, it had a lot of potential. Um, unfortunately, some of the, the things on it are just inappropriate. And, you know, I mean, even the back design, it's just like, I get it, but you're, you're, it's just another dude designing a chick deck that yeah. is for guys. It's a, literally for guys. Which, you know, something to consider. And if it doesn't fun, take it back to the drawing board. I think there's a, I think there's definitely better ways to represent South beach, Miami, uh, the price point though is spot on otherwise yeah. the campaign was pretty well thought out so something to consider if this does if this does have to go back to the drawing board craig bags so all right all right so that is the end of the new decks for this week that was 16 decks man we ran through a lot there so Crazy. which which decks would you back this week steve i'm gonna say royals I'm going to say Monohexa. I am going to say Card College. I am going to say um, Baseball Theme. I'm <laughs> going to stop there. <laughs> so I'm pretty much in the same boat with you. Oh, except... my God. Everybody, <laughs> he agreed with me. Uh, Everybody, uh... he agreed. Let's take down this date, what time it is. I mean, I think those are all relatively well thought out and good looking decks. The other one I'd probably throw in, though I agree with you on the back design color, is the green tea playing cards. Price point is spot on. I'm kind of intrigued by Mark decks more so recently, so I think it's a good kind of inexpensive Mark deck to kind of just play around with and check out. And I think the intricacy of the back design is really cool. So, so I have a question, Tyler. What's up? Why are you inspired by Mark decks? Can you tell me why? Probably because of the whole uh, Andre being yeah. on decking around. But then I realized that I have this deck of butterfly cards here that I thought was not the marked one. They all are. Uh, yeah. Well, I, unless you got an unmarked one. But. Yeah, and I didn't realize that until the other day. So now I'm like, oh, man, I got to go learn the marking system. And I like kind of figured out at least the, the suits. Yeah. Because yeah. that's easy. I'm not smart enough to figure out the numbers right uh, away. Yeah. Yeah, dude i'm not gonna say it but just put them in new deck order and you'll see so they are in new deck order except so i don't just, know if this is we'll talk, me we'll talk, we'll talk we'll talk about it no 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 no. so hold on though before i even jump into it i don't know if this is just me but my deck came in reverse new deck order that's fine it doesn't matter what order is in to be honest it's but like i've never seen that before have you uh no i mean sometimes every once in a while it's like a king and king are touching rather than an ace and king oh no like i got like the aces the ace of spades is the last the card yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it wasn't that that's true yeah which i thought that was very interesting when i saw it and i was like all right cool i'll have to dig into this a little bit more and figure out what the uh the marking system is but that being yeah. said that's probably why i would add the green tea deck yeah. to my list but i think this week there were a lot of campaigns out there 
I think price point is continuing to be something we're seeing here. And it's not just something that we're saying because we want less expensive decks. You're seeing it in the amount of decks that aren't funding every week. I think people, yeah. especially now, are much more discerning about what they're willing to back. And if you have a deck that is more than another deck that has more features to it, you're more likely not going to get back. You have to be competitive with it. And I think price point is the easiest place to be competitive unless you have foil and, you know, foil and or embossing on your deck. You shouldn't be kissing that $20 price point. Yeah, exactly. So okay. that's my, that's my firm stance on this right now, especially because we just saw a significant amount of decks with a lot of other stuff included with them, like gum and foil wrapping for $18 out the door. Pink gum, bro. Pink yeah. powdered gum. I don't know if that's powdered, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like it does and bring me back to the days that I was breaking open those tops baseball cards and uh just chomping on the pink gum. It was disgusting and it broke in like nine hundred pieces, but Yeah, no, it was definitely interesting yeah. gum. But that being said, we want to thank our sponsors for the show this evening. First and foremost, the lit cardistry baseball series playing cards which we just took a look at on kickstarter um if you haven't checked the deck out especially at this point when you just saw us talk through it talk about the phenomenal price point and talk about all the little fun things that are included in it you're you're doing yourself a disservice go check out the deck as soon as possible it is an awesome looking deck it has some great nostalgia vibes to it and in addition if you haven't watched major league go do it because it'll make you want the deck even more and for our second sponsor, Marvelous Decks. You remember when you were a kid running around outside at summer nights trying to catch fireflies and you'd catch them in the jar and it would just be such a magical experience. Or that first time you held fool's gold in your hand and thought you had some ancient treasure and you were just so awe-inspired. Well, your imagination is about to burst wide open as playing cards come to life with Marvelous Decks. Prepare yourself for a journey of heightened senses with these close-up details of the life that surrounds us. It's a journey you don't want to miss. Marvelous yeah. decks. I'm, I'm excited about that, dude. I, I'm like really looking forward to seeing what it looks like, and, and uh, it sounds pretty, yeah, pretty no, mysterious and magical, you know? It'll be an interesting, uh, interesting series of decks or deck to see i don't know yeah. it's plural yeah. there so we'll see but uh i'm excited i'm definitely excited so thank you to our sponsors thank you for you guys tuning in and watching another episode of decking around kickstarter edition make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we always appreciate the support uh make sure to leave a comment down below let us know what decks you're back in this week we always love to hear what you guys like what guys you what you don't like and see what campaigns really kind of catch your eye and uh yeah we drop these every monday so make sure to click that bell for notifications you don't want to miss them when they upload